Our journey starts 51 years ago at the historic Launchpad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Launchpad 39A was where the Saturn V had its first test flight of the Apollo 4 mission. On November 9, 1967, the Saturn V rocket launched the Apollo spacecraft on an 8-hour flight, launching it to an apogee of over 18,000 kilometers from Earth, making three orbits before its return. Fast forward to April 12th, 1981, back at Launchpad 39A where the Space Transportation System 1 or STS-1 mission was launched from. STS-1 was the first orbital spaceflight of NASA's space shuttle program, launching the Columbia Space Shuttle on an over two-day mission with astronauts John W. Young and Robert L. Crippen on board, traveling to an apogee of 274 kilometers from Earth, making 37 orbits before its return. Now, fast forward to today, 2018, on the same launch pad where SpaceX Falcon Heavy now stands, awaiting its first launch. Let's quickly recap the recent events involving the Falcon Heavy that I haven't covered on my channel. On December 28th, SpaceX rolled out the Falcon Heavy onto launch pad 39A. NASASpaceflight.com shared this spectacular time-lapse video of the massive rocket going vertical for the first time. The video runs at 34 times normal speed as we see the rocket rise slowly into the air. The apparatus beneath the Falcon Heavy is called a transporter erector and had to be specifically modified to support the rocket's sheer weight. And then on January 2nd, SpaceX posted the following video on Instagram of the Heavy at 39A. The description says with more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, equal to approximately 18 747 aircraft at full power. Falcon Heavy will be the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. Okay, so what happens next? The Falcon Heavy needs to complete a static fire test. A static fire test is a rehearsal of the launch and firing the engines at full thrust while the launch vehicle is held firmly attached to the launch mount for a few seconds in order to test engine startup while measuring pressure temperature, and propellant flow gradients. But before that, we will have to once again wait for the top secret government launch with the codename Zuma. The mission is so secret, we don't even know what government agency the launch is for. Zuma was supposed to take place in November, but was delayed. At that point, the launch prep for Zuma was moved to Launch Pad 40 so that SpaceX could start prepping 39A for the Falcon Heavy. Anyway, SpaceX needs to use its various resources for the Zuma mission, which is priority right now. And it's supposed to launch on January 7th. And once that happens, then SpaceX can focus on Falcon Heavy's static fire test. According to NASASpaceflight.com, the preliminary launch target for the Falcon Heavy is Monday, January 15th, eight days after Zuma's target launch date. That would be the perfect day for the Falcon Heavy's first launch. It's a federal holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. A lot of people, including myself, will have that day off and will be able to watch the live stream. I'm thinking that SpaceX will be anxious to complete the static fire test as soon as possible. So my guess is that we will see the static fire test on Tuesday, January 9th. But the key event now is Zuma. If Zuma launches Sunday, then we should be able to hear firm target dates for the static fire test and the launch itself. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe and this is the end of our journey.